In Western countries, Dr. Yunus, most populations have never been exposed. Most of the populations have never been exposed to poverty. From your personal experience, could you please describe how poverty affects people? Well, you use the word most, then I get a little hesitant. Otherwise, there's poverty everywhere. Whether you're a rich country, poor country, it doesn't matter. It is a question of all these women that I'm talking about, only 20, 11 cities that we have 100,000. Most of them are, are undocumented people. So you can imagine how desperate they are in the situation there. And nobody will go anywhere near them because they're undocumented, particularly in the Trump uh, regime. Uh, how difficult their life is, you never know when they'll be thrown out. And these are the people we are serving. And they do an excellent job. They're very happy, very proud of what they do, and continue to do that. So this is only touching the tip of the iceberg. And if you consider, in a broader way, all the wealth is concentrated in few hands, uh, not even 1%, less than 1% of the people have all the wealth of the, world, of the country. So what is left to the other people? If you go bottom 5%, forget about the others in between. Uh, how you call them, I don't know. Many of them are deprived from the health care and other facilities. Uh, even after Obamacare, there are still at least 8 million people or more than that who are uh, out of the uh, health care system and so on, legitimate citizens of the country. And so it's a question of how you look at it. So poverty exists everywhere. It's because of the way the system is built. The more is uh, sometimes it's relative, sometimes it's just a question of dollar uh, seventy-five cents per per head. Uh, so you are poor if it is two dollar fifty cents. You are uh, this is ultra poor. This is, this is the kind of monetary figures which depends on what where you are and so on. But uh, facilities wise, desperation wise, you have huge number. But it can be addressed. In, in poor countries, there are large number of them are in the situation. In a richer country, may not be uh, other way. And I give a very clear example of that when the people say that there is no poverty in the country. I said, do you have pe do you have people on welfare? Of course, we have on welfare. How many millions? I said, they are poor people. You are only hiding them. Mm -hmm. If Bangladesh had the capacity to give welfare, there won't be any poor people in Bangladesh. Because everybody will have cars, homes, whatever, whatever you got, because your welfare covers it. So the covering is not a solution. Covering is simply keep it out of sight. And that is not what is uh, human being deserve. Human being deserves to be independent entity, creative entity, <coughs> doing things for themselves, enjoy life in the way they want to do. And that creativity is an essential part of human being. Anybody who takes away from that, they cut them down. They d diminish human being. That's why when I say job, job diminishes because it takes my creativity away. I got into a slot. I'm no longer myself. I'm designed by somebody else. And I have to follow that because that's a part of the condition of the job. But I want to be myself. I want to be what I want to be. I have a purpose. I want to pursue that purpose in life. And that's what my challenge is. That's what I do. So again, coming back to this, uh, welfare is one as a kind of hiding. Uh, unemployment uh, benefits and all kinds of other benefits that you get. These are all trying to hide things rather than address things. No, nobody should be there. And in my book, I'm saying that we would like, we can create a world where, where there will be no unemployment at all. It's not just 1% unemployment, 5% unemployment. If it is one digit unemployment, you're so happy there's one digit, single digit unemployment. You see, as if they're nobody. One, when you say half a percent, when you say 5%, when you say 9%, lots of people. But you get away as if this is nothing because we got uh, kind of uh, adjusted to that kind of thing. I said, even 1% is deprived, is one life deprived. Why should we? What kind of system we built after all these years of our learning, knowledge, and everything else. And then when you come to uh, poverty, poverty is related to income. Income is related to what you do. The enterprise is something which is basic to human being. I can do that. And if you consider all these robotics coming on the way, artificial intelligence coming, knocking the door. Uh, when I came here last week, somebody uh, expert in technology explaining to me the future of technology and the future in Bangladesh of technology. 
this very quite clear statement is uh, you are, your number one business today in the world is your garment industry in Bangladesh. We are the second largest garment manufacturer in the whole world. <coughs> China is number one, Bangladesh is number two. So you, you can imagine how important that industry is. Millions of women work in these factories. They produce all the garments that we wear. Yeah. So with the artificial intelligence now come into the garment industry. They have found out very special kind of system where they can do exactly what the garment workers do, do it in a better way with artificial intelligence. So our projection is in the 10 to 15 years, Bangladesh will not have any garment industry left because nobody has to go to Bangladesh because of the cheap labor, because they have a cheaper way of doing it by artificial intelligence. They will do it at their home. Why go to Bangladesh and transship all these things to your country? You do it yourself. So what happens to our own? This is not only Bangladesh. It will be global impact. Uh, if it's not 10 to 15 years, in 20 years, huge number of people already engaged in work, having successful uh, career, will not be there anymore because artificial intelligence will let them go out. Large factories in China today is run by 10 or 20 people. Everything is totally mechanized. Either robots or artificial intelligence, what even it. So that's the prospect. So you design now all these nearly 8 billion people on this planet. Where do they go? And now 40 million young people enter job markets globally every year. 40 million of them. Where do we put them if you're job-oriented people? So you get scared. You have to, uh, do you think, uh, should we have more welfare coming up? This is the only solution because they, in our pocket, there's no other solution. Only thing we can do, give them money, keep them quiet, move on with their life, make money, get rich. I said, I have the other vision. I don't, I don't feel threatened by the 40 million young people coming into the job market. You see it as a entering the job market. I see 40 million young people coming with fresh new ideas as entrepreneurs whole world would be very different when they come into picture because they will come with bright ideas and so on, challenging the things which is a status quo and so on, challenge the status quo. And this is what I see. But you need to change, prepare their mind for that purpose. Education system becomes important. Today, education system is uh, ultimately uh, oriented towards producing a diploma, a degree. Why do you need a degree? Because you have, when you apply for a job, you have to attach that that I came from such a brilliant school, so I deserve the job than anybody else. If you become an entrepreneur, you don't need a piece of paper. You need performance. You can do anytime you want. You don't have to complete it. You cannot get to the job market unless you complete. In the, in the real world of entrepreneurship, you can have your education and your business at the same time, together, continue, grow up together. It's possible. So it says poverty is a kind of isolated thing for poor people. We have to do something, give them charity and so on. It's not an isolated thing. It's a part of the entire concept of how you build the society for future and now. 